P-O-S-T. P-O-S-T. Post. The serials you like the most brings you the Roy Rogers Show, starring the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. It's roundup time on the double R bar. So saddle your horse, cause we're gonna ride far. The double R bar ranch transcribes stories and songs of the real West with the Whippoorwills. The wisest trail scout of them all, Jonah Wilde, played by Forrest Lewis. The Queen of the West, Dale Evans. And in person, the King of the Cowboys, Roy Rogers. Well, howdy, folks. This is Roy Rogers. Say, what makes breakfast the best meal of the day? You buckaroos can answer that one. It's Post Cereals. You know you can count on anything bearing the brand name Post. So have Mom put Post Cereals on the shelf where they'll be handy all the time. Well, sir, the Paradise Valley ranchers have been bothered by rustlers again the past few weeks, and everybody is watching mighty close to see some sign that will lead to the rustlers' trail. Howdy, Dick. Well, howdy, Sheriff. Here you ain't had much luck catching the rustling gang yet. Not much, but we'll get them sooner or later. Hey, Dick, I'm thinking about buying a new saddle. How much will it cost me? Well, I'll show you what we got, Sheriff. Uh, have them at three or four prices, depending on how good a saddle you want. Uh, who's... Why, good morning, Mr. Platt. Morning, Lappin. Good to see you, Sheriff. How's things out your way, Sheriff? Uh, I'm worried about rustlers, same as anybody else. What's new on them? Well, we're ready for them this time if they strike again. Uh, you can wait on him first, Dick. I'll be having a look at the saddles. Uh-huh. Lappin, you got any 30-30 rifle cartridges? Oh, lots of them. You going hunting? Hmm. Might call it that. I'd be careful about game, Mr. Platt. You shoot anything there's a closed season on. And there's you... no closed season on two-legged game in this country. Two-legged? Game that walks on You two... mean Bob Noble, don't you, Shell? Now, look here. That feud between you and Noble is liable to lead to killing I want to stop. You understand? Where's my box of shells, Lappin? All right here, Mr. Platt. I'll get hold of Bob and bring you two together. We'll work out your difficulties if we have I to. wouldn't be seen on the same side of the street with that hombre, Sheriff. Not even if he was dead. Put these on my bill, Lappin. Sheriff! Rustlers are at it again. Uh, uh, what's that? Rustlers. Here, yeah, rustlers. They're taking my cat off. If we can put a posse on our trail, we can grab them this time. A posse standing by, ready to go. Now, you put them on the trail, then. I saw Roy Rogers heading for the cafe as I went by. I'll see if he can help us. This looks like the chance we've been waiting for. You bet I'll ride with you, Tom. That goes for me, too. Oh, convolutions. Another ten minutes and I could have finished a chapter of the book I'm writing. I found the hoof prints leading toward six points. All right. We'll let the sheriff and his posse follow him. We'll take the shortcut over the mountain. Maybe we'll be able to put them in a pocket. Hey, look down there, across the valley. It's a herd of cattle, all right. Are they yours, Tom? I can't see from this distance. They may be. Well, don't forget now, Roy. The pen is mightier than the sword. You can throw your pen at them, Jonah. I'm going to use a gun. Oh, fudge. Tom, we'll ride down on them from this side. You go back and tell the posse to close in fast. You bet, Roy. Dale, Jonah, make all the noise you can when we're coming up to the herd. We'll have a better chance of taking the rustlers if we stampede the cattle. All right, go after horses. Trigger leaps out in front toward the escaping rustlers. In seconds, he is pulled abreast of one. Roy leaps at the man, pulling him from his horse. The two men fall to the ground heavily. They struggle. Roy gets the upper hand, begins to subdue the outlaw. At the same time, Jonah rides alongside the other rustler, bulldogs him. They hit the ground together. Dale is there, dismounting. She puts a gun on the rustler. I'll bring this hombre over there, and we'll wait for the posse. It'll be coming along soon.
Well, we got two of them anyway, Sheriff. Well, that makes a good start. All right, head for town. You're on the way to the lockup. Yeah, sure. The way I twisted my hand when I took that fella off his horse, I bet you I won't be able to do no writing for a week. Another week of grace for the world. Pooh. Now, you two quit kidding, Jonah. We wouldn't have had both of these rustlers if it hadn't been for him. Oh, he knows we were just kidding, don't you, Jonah? My apologies, General's boy. I... Pooh. What's the matter? Don't you feel well, Jonah? Yes, I feel fine. I say just fine. Then where's that well-known temper of yours? Don't let him get your goat, Jonah. Save your breath. As soon as we get these armors to jail, we'll pick up Bullet and have him trail the rest of the gang. Uh-huh. We'll have to do it alone, too. The posse's busy rounding up the cattle we stampeded. Listen, what was that? Oh, maybe we won't have to go for Bullet after all. Sheriff, can you get these armors back to town alone? Wait, Roy. The sound came from the direction of Bob Noble's ranch. Yeah, it did sound like it. I met Sheldon Platt in the hardware store early this morning, buying 30-30 ammunition. He said he was going after two-legged game. The feud, his family and Bob Noble's. Convolutions. You attend to these two, Sheriff. Dale and Joan and I will see where that shot came from. We'll see you later. Oh, oh. Well, everything looks calm enough here. We'll walk up to the house and find out. I mean, I got to figure out a title. Boy, I'd a whole lot rather fight a gang of rustlers than have a feud break out between two of our friends. And gee, now, people I have known, and what about them? What are you talking about, Jonah? Did you... Huh? Oh, uh, the title for my book. I got almost a whole chapter wrote, Roy, and I ain't selected the title yet. Well, you may not live to select the title if you don't keep your mind on your business. And she, the friends and enemies of Jonah Wilde during the first 61 years of his career. Yeah, well, ain't bad. A lot of good you you're talking, did, Roy. Yeah, I know. Well, it'd be all right for a set of books. It's too long for one, though, seems like. Come on here, yeah. Jonah. Wake up. Uh-huh. Oh, oh, say, Roy and Dale, too. There's something I've been wanting to ask you about. A delicate matter. Well, this is a fine time to think about it. Just how delicate, Jonah? Well, you see, Dale... Howdy. Get... Oh, interruptions. Always interruptions. This is an unexpected pleasure. Hi, Hello, Bob. Mr. Noble. Yeah, come in, won't you? Well, thanks. We can't stay. We're out after the gang that tried to rustle Tom Hill's cattle. And we heard a shot fired off in this direction. Ah, uh, yes. I heard it too, Roy. You don't know what it was? No, I haven't given it much thought. I just naturally supposed my boy, young Bob, had spotted a coyote. He's riding the North Range somewhere. Mm, that's a relief. See now, stories nobody would listen to. That's a good time. Oh, we were no, a little worried no. about you. Otherwise, we wouldn't have bothered coming to your house. About me? Why? On account of the feud between you and Shell Platt. <laughs> well, well, it's nice of you to think about me, Roy, but I don't reckon our feud would ever reach the shooting stage. Shell might fence off a water hole. It could or... reach the shooting stage, though, Bob. Oh, no, no. The no. sheriff ran into Platt this morning buying 30 30 ammunition. Said he was after two legged game. You're just fooling, aren't you, Roy? No, he isn't. I wish I was. Well, I... Uh, well, you folks, excuse me. I, I'll get my horse. I don't believe Platt would kill anybody, but all the same, I'd like to check and see that young Bob's all right. Well, we'll go with you. If anything has happened to your boy, you may need help. Oh, I'm just wasting your folks' time. I know I am. Shell Platt isn't mean enough to take a spite out on a man's family. Well, it won't hurt to make sure. And then we'd all feel better. Poor cats and friends, I have no Now, well, that ain't bad. <laughs> Easy trigger. Listen, he sees something. Poor cats and friends, I have no hmm, That's pretty good. Whoa, whoa. Steady, boy. <laughs> hey, look there. The others look in the direction Roy indicates. At first, they see nothing but the great silent rocks that are common to the country. The air is still. I don't see anything, Roy. Wait. It's gone now. They look again. Still nothing. Now, a slight movement behind the rocks. Someone is hiding there. Roy's hand goes to his gun. Come out from there. Make it snappy. Again, silence. The hidden person is out of sight again. Come on, or we'll ride after you. A slight movement. A man, a very young man, appears. His body sways. He takes a step out into the open, staggering. It's young Bob. He's hurt. 
Son! Let's get over there to him. What is it? What's the matter, son? Nothing's the matter. Let me alone. He's been wounded. I'm all right. Well, you don't look all right to me. Why, he can hardly stand. Oh, I never will get a title with all this to do going on. I don't need you. Well, what are you doing here? I, I can take care of my own affairs. He's passed out. The wound, Roy. Well, you folks look after Bob. I got something else to do. Stay right where you are. Now, you better take it easy, Mr. I'll Noble. I'll take it easy after I see Shell Platt laying dead. None of that now, Noble. I'll hunt Platt down just like any other coyote. Come back here. Use your hands. Let me loose, Roy. Here, here, now. Calm down. The first thing you know, you spend five right. or ten years behind bars making license plates for automobiles. I'm leaving now. Hey, cut it out. I'm you... trying to help you, Bob. No, no. I'm going to kill the man that shot my son. Don't let him just keep hitting you, Roy. Bob, I hate to do this. And I know you'll be sorry later. Oh. Well, he had it coming. Oh, I don't blame him much. When his son has been shot. All right. Let's see what we can do for the boy. Say, do you like to raid the kitchen much as folks around Double R Bar Ranch do? Well, you know what the cook out there discovered? Folks love to nibble on post-sugar crisp right out of the package. Just like candy. That's right, it's that good. And, of course, post-sugar crisp was just made to brighten up breakfast. Mmm, just poured into a big bowl with milk or cream. You don't need sugar. That delicious candy-coated puffed wheat is just sweet enough. You'll love it served the same way between meals, too, as a special snack or just before bedtime. Yes, post-sugar crisp is fun to eat all day long. There's lots of wholesome goodness in post-sugar crisp, too. It gives you wheat for nourishment... The sugar and honey coating for quick energy. So, how about it? Have you tried Post Sugar Crisp yet? Look for it at your grocer's in the giant or regular size red, white, and blue package with the three little bears on the front. Young Bob Noble lies on the ground while Roy, with Dale's and Jonah's assistance, attends his wound. The boy's father gets unsteadily to his feet tries to piece together all that has happened. How Roy, Dale, and Jonah were trailing rustlers and came to the ranch on hearing a gunshot. How they found young Bob wounded, probably by Shell Platt. Noble remembers now. Roy knocked him out when he wanted to kill Shell. His anger mounts. His determination to kill Shell is renewed. But the others are paying no attention to him. I'm all right, I tell you. I don't want to go to any doctor. Well, what you want makes no difference. We're going to take you to the doctor. My life among idiots and wise men. Yes. Uh, no, I won't do it. Mr. Noble. Hey. What? Well, we're going to take your boy into the doctor now. We want you to come along. All right. Uh, look here, Bob. I'm mighty sorry I had to hit you. Roy had to do it, Mr. Noble. If he'd let you go, you'd have ridden out of here and tried to kill Shell Platt. Yeah, I know. I, I would have killed him. But you can't hold me back forever, Rogers. Well, this is your boy who's hurt, Bob. It seems to me you'd want to help us with him. Yeah. All right. Sure. That's the stuff. You'll feel a lot better when you have time to think things out. Lift his shoulders here. We'll get him up on the horse. Noble does as Roy asks, and on the ride to Mineral City seems resigned, though sullen. At the doctor's office, he waits until the doctor says his son is out of danger, then disappears. Roy, Deal, and Jonah stay on, however, because the doctor is called away, and young Bob is in no condition to be left alone. I'm getting out of here. Not yet, I'm afraid. The doc said you were to rest here for a couple of hours. Curious, folks, and what they've done. Yeah, no, no kicking that. This is no good. This is no good. Oh, you don't want to leave without your dad, Bob. He'll be back soon. He's over the sheriff's office making a report on the shooting. What's he interfering in my affairs for? I can attend to my own business. I don't need help. Oh, Dad Raddit, stop this noise, will you? How can I think of a title for my book with your big bazoon going all the time? Well, Jonah, you didn't exactly whisper. People don't understand an artist at work, do they, Jonah? No, sir, Roy, they don't. Sixty-one years of trying to deal with human beings. 
A little long, but it's good thinking. What's he jabbering about? Uh, who knows? Well, my book. I say my book. I'm writing a book because nobody ever listens to me when they try to say something. It's a book Look, all about... I'm not fooling. Uh, i got to get out of here. Yeah, you see there? Proves my point right there. Dad, you stay where you are, Bob. Dad has no right to interfere in my affairs. Roy, Roy, I need help. What's the matter, Sheriff? Now, Bob Noble has a crowd around him. He's organizing a gang of his friends to ride out and get Shell Platt. Oh, I knew something like that would happen, Roy. Shell Platt? Yes, for wounding you. But why go after him? He's no good, but he's never been... Look a... here, fella. Shell Platt's the man who shot you, isn't he? I'm not saying who did it. That's my business and mine alone. Now, Roy, we'd better hurry. We don't want any angry mobs in this country. Go ahead, Roy. I'll stay with Bob. All right. Only keep him here. Do whatever you have to, but keep him here until we can get back. <laughs> I didn't kill anybody. There's no reason. You're coming along all the same, Mr. Platt. I won't spend one minute in jail. I haven't done anything that rates trouble with the law. Shell, we're taking you to jail to save your life. You only think you're taking me. He's going to draw, Roy. Hold it, Platt. Jonah, take his gun, will you? Well, sure thing. By doggies, I didn't see your hand move, Roy, but you sure grabbed a gun from Summers. Give me that thing, you poor cat. Don't touch my gun. Boy, you, are, you pigeon told chissy cat. You got that red you. Get an old soldier, will you, you jughead? Yeah, huh? Yeah. I bet you he'll have more respect for his country now. Say, my uh, old sidekick is really all right. Jonah, I'm proud of you. <clears throat> Tin Star, I've been a trying my best to hold my temper, but I just naturally get my hackles up when somebody hits an old soldier. Especially if it's me. Come on, get up, Platt. We came here to save your life. We're wasting our time unless we move fast. This shortcut will save us a lot of time. We'll need every minute. It'd be rough if we met Noble and his mob on the way to Platt's Ranch. People nobody wants to hear about. Now that's... Oh, no. I hope we do meet them. I'll take Noble on any day of the week. If we figured right, Sheriff, they'll be riding the main trail, not cutting through the mountains. What's the matter, boy? Yeah, uh, triggers like me today, Roy. Nervouser than a small boy in a woodshed. Well, maybe he senses something we don't. Better stop, I guess. Hey, somebody's coming up this trail. From beyond the next bend of the mountain trail comes the sound of approaching horsemen, a large group. Roy, Jonah, the sheriff, and their prisoner wait tensely to see if what they dread is true. The riders are coming nearer at a steady clip. Their voices can be heard distinctly. The hoofbeats of their horses are... Suddenly, the leader appears around the bend, then the first of his followers. Yes, Bob Noble! And the gang's with him! Ride for it! Plant, take the lead! We'll hold them off! The only place you'll be safe is in the cell! Ride for all your work if you want to live! here for the time being. Yeah, that dreaded excitement knocked all them titles right out of my head. Noble and his men are outside, Sheriff. We better not try anything. I've got an arsenal in here. Well, give me a gun. I'll shoot it out with Noble any day in the week. You'll stay right where you are, Platt. These men are neighbors, even if they are overly excited. Overly excited, he says. Sheriff, I'll try to make it across the street to the doc's office. Don't do it, Roy. Those men outside are just looking for an excuse to use guns. We've got to have a statement from young Noble to know for sure that Shell tried to kill him. Roy, you're risking your life. Well, I'll have to chance it. Things can't go on this way. Outside, Roy faces the sullen men. He starts across the street. His eyes look directly into the eyes of the men standing in his path. He walks toward them. His steps firm, unwavering. The men step aside. No word is spoken. A low murmur from the sidelines now and then, but no word said aloud. Roy reaches the sidewalk. His back is toward the crowd now. 
but he does not turn. He goes straight ahead. He reaches the doctor's office, opens the door, and steps inside. Oh, Roy, what do you mean by taking a chance like that? Where's young Bob? The inner office. He gave me trouble for quite a while, but he's calmed down now. Yeah, but only for now. There's trouble, Bob. I want a straight answer. Was it Shell Platt who shot you? I told you before I can fight my own battles. I can't take time to argue. I... Wait, look out this window, Bob. See those men? Your dad's leading them. They're here to wreck the jail and get Shell Platt. What am I supposed to do, cry? Shell's no friend of ours. They're going to take the law into their own hands unless we stop them. So what? Ah, uh, he's no good, Roy. He's just no good. Your dad's leading them. If Platt's killed, the law will hold your dad for murder. I want the truth, Bob. Is Platt the man who shot you? Come on, answer me, Bob. I'm in a spot, Roy. You bet you're in a spot. Well, not like that. What I mean is, if I talk, I'm in trouble. Is the trouble bad enough so you'd let your dad be found guilty of murder? No. No, I, I guess not. Well, then talk. Platt didn't shoot me. That's what I thought. Here, let's open this window. Now, you're going to tell your dad what you just told me. I, I, I... Go on. Noble! Noble! Look up here! Your boy wants to tell you something. Hey, hold it, hold it a minute. Wait a minute. All right. Let's hear what Bob wants. Go on, Bob. Platt didn't shoot me. It wasn't Platt at all. Who did I, I can't tell you when you're out there, Dad. Come in here, Noble. Come in here and he'll tell you in private. Partner? Nobody's going to have to ride herd on you to eat breakfast. No siree. Once you try new, improved post-toasties, the heap good cornflakes, you'll get up and go for them, because you're heading for the best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Mmm, flakes of sweet kernel flavor, crackling fresh. They won't mush up in milk. Post-toasties, heap good cornflakes... The best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Heap good corn flakes, post toasties, heap good corn flakes. Say, big Indians, little Indians, everybody's wild about those fresh tasting post toasties. And with sugar and cream, they're heap good nourishment, too. Tomorrow, head straight as an arrow for your favorite grocers and ask for new, improved post toasties. Post toasties, heap good corn flakes. The best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Heap good corn flakes. Post toasties, heap good corn flakes. All right, Bob. Let's hear it, boy. He seems to be afraid, Roy. Oh, we're waiting, Bob. Let me see now. Jonah Wild's life among people. Hmm? Fairy. In fact, he's been fairy. We're yeah. waiting, son. This is going to be tough on you, Dad. Might be even tougher on the man who pulled the trigger. It wasn't Platt. It wasn't anybody you know. Dad, I... Well, I guess I'm a pretty bad son. I'm a member of the rustling gang. Go on. I double-crossed them, and they've got it in for me. You see, a couple of weeks ago, I needed some extra money. I took some that belonged to the gang. They found out about it, and, well, I I guess I signed my own death warrant. I don't believe you, Bob. You wouldn't sign up with rustlers. I did, though. Roy, I, I guess I'd like to go to jail. I'll have the sheriff put you in a separate cell from the two rustlers we caught this morning. Yeah, I wouldn't live long in with them. Well, so long, Dad. Bob... Bob, before we go over, let's talk a minute. You can't escape paying for what wrong you've done, but you can show that you're sorry and want to be on the right side of the law again. Do you want to tell us where the wrestling gang has its headquarters? I don't know, Roy. Let me think a minute. Civilized and uncivilized acquaintances. Yes. No, no zing. Well, Bob? I'll... The headquarters is at... Halfway point, the cave there. If you got two of them, besides me, there are eight men left. Thanks, Bob. This will probably help you get a lighter sentence when your case comes up in court. Roy, if the men outside believe you, 
Maybe you could put their energy to good use. Help take the rustling gang, you mean? That's just what I aim to do, Dale. <laughs> Jonah, aren't you going with Roy and the men? Yes, I Huh? Oh, 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 yeah. Yes, What's I What's the matter am. with you, pacing up and down and... Giggling and smirking that way. Oh, well, Dale, I, I got something on my mind. I say, real delicate. Oh, yes, I think you mentioned something about that. Yes, mm-hmm. Yes, I've been in training for it all day. <clears throat> I kept my temper when the sheriff was a-goading me. Did you notice that? I noticed. Uh-huh. But you said you wanted help with this uh, delicate matter. Yes, mm well, I can't very well help unless I know what to do. No, you can't. Well, it just... Uh, <laughs> uh, well, uh, well uh, saying what I have to is... It's kind of, it's kind of embarrassing, Dale. <laughs> like as if I was walking around with a with a hole in my sock. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> well, I uh, got almost a chapter of my book done. Yes? Yeah, uh, wrote by hand, though. And, uh, if, <laughs> yeah, well, it ought to be wrote by typewriter. Well, sure. Sure. Well, yes, but the only typewriter in town is owned by the... <laughs> he's owned by the school marm. <laughs> well? Uh, well, Dale, uh, would you ask the school marm if she'd please to type my book? Me? Well, you ask her yourself. Oh, sure. <laughs> why, oh. Jonah, why? Well, <laughs> Dale, I... I just can't help it, you know. <laughs> oh, sure. Every time that lady looks at me out from under them long lashes, I just feel all the breath go out of me, and I, I say, well, I sort of will clean away to nothing. Well, Jonah. Hey, oh. Mm. Oh, get on out here if you're riding with us. Oh, yes, yes, yes sir, Roy. I'm a coming. Yes, I'm a coming. Oh. What's the matter with you? You look like Jonah. You haven't got your weather eye out for some lady friend, have you? No, you don't. No, well, yeah. I'll be a monkey's uncle. My old sidekick, 61 years a soldier, a private all the way, and he's about to lose the war. Looking for a cowboy and a handsome one, of course, with a two-seated saddle and a one-gated horse. And I'm yearning for a blue sky with a great big yellow moon and a slow-riding cowboy who will croon me up to a song of the sagebrush and cattle who will sing me to sleep in a replete seated saddle. Until I find that cowboy, I'll search out every source for a two-seated saddle with a one-gated horse. For now, folks, this is Roy Rogers saying to all of you, from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Happy trails to you until we meet again. Happy trails to you. Keep smiling until then. The Roy Rogers Show is brought to you by Post Serials.
each week at this same time with the Whippoorwills, Forrest Lewis, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. An Art Rush production transcribed, directed by Tom Hargis, script by Ray Wilson, music by Milton Charles. Featured in today's cast were Frank Hemingway, Herb Butterfield, Ralph Moody, Sam Edwards, and Bob Griffin. This is Art Ballinger speaking for P.O.S.T. Post Serials. Happy trails to you until we meet again. Happy trails to you. Keep smiling home till then. Who cares about the clouds if we're together? Just sing a song and bring the sunny weather. Happy trails to you till we meet.